לקבל צבאתי. ואנחנו גם מודיפים את ה-ED25519 כפורמט, היא שאנחנו לא נסגרנו את ההשים, ואחד מההשים האלגוריתם שאנחנו נסגרנו זה נקרא בלופיש. The advantage of Blowfish, and this is one of the huge advantage of this key format compared to ECDSA, is that if someone steals that private key and try to do, try to decode the boss phrase using offline analysis like what it was Snowden showed, because of the way Blowfish is designed, it makes brute forcing much more difficult. It's not impossible to do, but we, while mixing Blowfish into this new key format, we make offline analysis. What I mean by offline is that someone takes the key, but uh, takes it inside a supercomputer and tries to analyze it. So it steals it. So with this new key format here, and by mixing Blowfish into it, we make it very difficult for someone to do this. So even if he has been able to steal the private key and then force it into it, it's very difficult for him to do the of it. So that's one of the huge advantage of the uh, ED5519 key format. Unfortunately, by doing this, we break backward compatibility, which makes sense, because then the SSH server has to be running 6.5 in order for it to be able to process in the new key format, which is 25519. So why should I use the new key format? Uh, because it doesn't uh, it doesn't have a weakness of the of the format. It's uh, it doesn't depend on the hardware render number generator, which might be flawed, because it uses Blockfish. Uh, let me put the question differently. I'm going to my management, and I've got to convince them you know how it is in work to to make this change. If I'm going to talk about random number generators. And what's going to happen? It's going to be difficult. So what? How do I explain to them why I should do this? Not for what? Because yeah, the old one has been there. Yeah. It's hard, right? The old one is vulnerable, so you have to it's break not, to the. It's not backward compatible. Sorry. It's not backward compatible. So the the, the key we're having right now it won't work. No, no, uh, but the existing key, if you use uh, ECDSA, it works fine. But in order to, for you, for example, if you generate your, your SSH client, and then you use, uh, you have 6.5 as SSH client, and then, for example, you try to connect, for example, with an SSH server, which is 6.3. Mm -hmm. Now, it can't process the new key format, because it doesn't have a new code inside. Yeah, but the older key was still working. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Well, the keys, yeah. It's going to fall back. Yeah. Which one? Which we, we didn't actually. Okay. Also, well, well, the server when it's upgraded to uh, six point five, it still works with the old clients. So we, yes, that's so a question. Very good question. Turned out when uh, when I was testing the new SSH client, uh, we some of the older devices. I realized that there was an issue with the new SSH client and some of the Cisco routers, the eighteen forty one. And because of the way, since Cisco uses an old version of Open SSH, they, they still use for something else, it's called uh, key exchange format. And it still uses small, uh, a small number of bits for key format. Turned out that now, due to the changes that we made, this doesn't work. And I filed a bug report with Cisco. I'm following up with them. And I'm trying to get them to fix this because that, that's, that requires a lot of work because we have to change the SSH, test it on their hardware, and then repackage a new update for Cisco iOS. So uh, this is going to take, take quite some time, but right now I have a workaround for this. I have a workaround for this, and I'll, uh, I'll show you later if you have Cisco routers. That's the, that's the only issue that. Uh, I've encountered the book, which is called. Um, and I need two questions this time. Yes, to answer to your question, um, personally, I think that the Snowden documents reveal a number of 
but a number of assumptions that we've made over the years turned out to be wrong. For example, you can no longer trust the national standards, but national institutional standards or whatever, because NIST, because the US, actually the US military is pressuring all the standards body to add a fair version of the document for crypto. It's something it's something which is very difficult because uh, I don't know, at the IT as well. Uh, In terms of security, uh, we can talk our security in different uh, terms. For example, uh, Logan was talking about cryptography, math mathematics, a guy trying to uh, write an algorithm to create the uh, 25519. Uh, this kind of work is not done in the ITF because you've got to have very bright people. You have to have cryptographers and there are very few people in the world who can do cryptography, who can write this type of code. No, they are very, very there bright. There are many people, there are few who can do it well. Yeah, there are very few who can do it well and they got to prove, they got to find what called proof that this Algorithm is secure and it's not easy, it's not stuff I can do. I don't know if Logan can do it or Ajay can do it, but I can't do it. And in the IDF, we don't do stuff like this because we don't have people who can do stuff like this. Even in an international body, it's difficult to find these people. So everybody relies on the NIST, which is a US agency for standardization, to do that work for them. The problem is that they've been doing it for years and recently somebody found out that okay, you are, we are using this standard but the guy behind these standards are people which we, let's say we are not comfortable with because they work for a certain agency and they've been, um, it's like this. I give you a key, I tell you you are safe. But I have a duplicate key there, which I can use to open your door. But I'm going to tell you, you know what? Trust me, I'm the good guy. <laughs> and when you think of it in terms of secrets, a secret that maybe yeah, we don't have this value to our secrets. But let's say you are a bank. Let's say you have 2,000, uh, 200,000 routers. Don't trust people like this. So I'm not trusting trust. I yeah. can't trust you. You trust this person. This means I'm trusting you, and I'm implicitly trusting this person. It's about the chain of trust. And it turned out that we've uh, recent NSA revelations, uh, we realize that we can't trust NIS. So that's why we are researching into new cryptographic techniques. But we know people like DJV. We are not, uh, and still proven <laughs> We are not under payroll of the NSA. No. Let's say you came from a ticket country, Russia. Okay? You are in Russia. You have to create a secure product. Would you trust would you use a product from the US for Russia? You won't. Why? In IT? Yeah. You don't have a choice. You won't trust your phone and the same the standards <laughs> and the hardware come from the face ID. Yeah, but the problem is that you are the MSB, would you use a product from the US? Yes, if you don't have a choice. You, 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 are you can't redevelop everything. You, redevelop. you are an intelligence agency. You can't, you can't do this. You can't do this. No, of course not. Not even the hardware. So they don't use Microsoft? They, they no, don't they, use, uh, they're going to use Microsoft when they're going to type their letters, when they're going to sign the long letters. But for the serious intelligence gathering, they won't use other products. Okay. Uh, there's a policy in the US that they, they're going to stop using the Chinese brand Huawei. Mm -hmm. They're going to stop using, uh, as a policy, all these uh, systems in government agencies. Why? Because it's a Chinese product. Yeah, but the US have the equivalent products they can make this choice. Of course. But most but of the, the countries will not re 
create the same uh, devices? No. The Cisco, the I, I understand uh, what you're saying. What you're saying is that you uh, it's, the wheel for it's, everything. it's not feasible. For, for example, we're still in this room. There are a lot of devices in this room. We don't have uh, the, the know-how to go and, and manufacturing uh, prowess to go and create the same, recreate the same products. Okay, that's fine. But if you are doing security, uh, sometimes you have to, you go to create a product, for example, let's say uh, Mrs. Merkel has a Blackberry. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the one is selling on her phone, <laughs> it's like it. Uh, that Blackberry which she uses, I think she got a new one now, which she uses, it's not the same Blackberry that you, you will get you know, when you go to Same for Obama. He wanted to use, keep using his BlackBerry when yeah. he became president. He got a new version of the BlackBerry specifically tailored for him. The risk was why? Because the general BlackBerry, it could, could be used, used as a tracking device. If an adversary knew his phone number and had access to the cell towers, he could triangulate the, the president's position. This is a risk. So he had a, a version of BlackBerry specifically made for him, which was reviewed by his super service and the military guys uh, and determine how, um, what risk this device can pose to him as a, as a president. Because it is a tracking tra device. Okay, we speak about uh, one okay. brand of phone. It mm -hmm. exists a lot of other brand of phones, simple one. You can find an, you can find an equivalent. But we speak about the uh, Russia and the American yeah. product. We cannot reinvent or change everything. They, they won't change Microsoft. Uh, they won't, but they, there is not America. They, uh, for example, the router. Maybe they're going to put Cisco router. But they're going to have an arrangement where with Cisco, where they can go and read the source code. They're going to audit exactly. the source code or to, yeah. find, to find out yes. it's secure. They're not going to get them the, the guard from the US to read. They're going to read themselves. Mm -hmm. No, because. Security, there are, as I said, there are different levels of security and when you work for the president of Russia, he has a lot of money. The country has money. You've got to tell your boss, okay, this is secure. You know, if you go to put it, you say this is secure and you find out that it's not secure. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be nice. It's going to be a bit. Yeah. Okay. From a motion's perspective, it's we we don't do stuff like this. We're already yeah, out of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, and there's only one thing lacking in the is that it cannot be used uh, with for DNS, for doing DNS validation using SSH. And uh, that's why, uh, in fact, it's a problem that uh, Ajay pointed out to me before the release. Unfortunately, we have to go through the ITF now, and SM is working on that. I'm trying to work on that. And SM is working with the ITF. So that we can push this as a standard and we can do better validation uh, in, with SSH and DNS. And uh, as I said, working on that, yeah, <coughs> And then we've got the brand new cipher, which it was again developed <laughs> by, uh, basically implemented it uh, on the, based on the mathematical papers of DJB. And I'm just going to do a brief demo for people. Chacha 420 would have been more fun. <laughs> <laughs>
now I'm using a new cipher. Uh, again, unless the server, it's important to point this out, unless a remote server has a newest version of a bad SSH, you can't do this. I'll do another example this time. We show this says no matching cipher. So when it queries the remote SSH server, it can't find uh, the choice of, of cipher, which is chat 20 1305 and therefore it can't connect. Is it clear? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's not complicated. What is saying that uh, the cipher is not backward compatible, which means that if an if you have an old version of OpenSSH, it yes, won't work with the old version of SSH, of the OpenSSH server. So again, I'm going to stress this out, but it's very important that you all start the breaking to the new version of OpenSSH. What do you mean by cipher? Cipher. Okay, it's communication. It's it's like a, a cipher is a way to encrypt. Uh, plain text data, like for example your name, but when you, for example, when you send your password over an entrusted communication link such as the internet, you want to have some kind of protection. A cipher is... It's, and it's like, you got to encrypt the, the, the information you're sending, and a cipher, it's an algorithm to encrypt this information. There are different kind of, there are different algorithms, and ChaCha20, is one of them. And one of the advantages of ChaCha20 is that it's very fast. It's almost as fast as the OP4 cipher. It's almost as fast as the OP4 cipher, but it doesn't suffer from the same vulnerabilities as the OP4 cipher, which again uh, was something that was documented in Edward Snowden. He said that uh, the NSC had found ways to actually brute force our full cipher. So we've got a new cipher which has the same speed advantages as the our full cipher, but which is more secure. Just one little thing I wanted to add. Um, encryption cipher everything don't prevent your data from being intercepted. People can still intercept your data. They're just going to intercept an encrypted set of data, which is not uh, any sort of way meaningful to them. Okay? So that, that's the reason of the encryption. Can't prevent someone from taking the information. It's just meaningless for them. Because then you, you have the keys. Yeah. And then um, we did like a full security audit of almost all the whole open SSH code base. I, Fixed like I think around a dozen small issues related to a small small security issues that could potentially leak information back to an attacker. And uh, I basically took the whole OpenSSH code and went line by line and tried to find ways that tried to find vulnerabilities inside the source code. And turned out that I have fixed around 12 of them. There are still more fixes that I have to do. The problem is that right now uh, I don't have as much time as I want to work on this. But it's something that uh, it's an ongoing process, and I'm thinking of OpenSSH 6.6, there are going to be even more bug fixes.